Welcome back everybody, Chef David here from the New Wave Studio Kitchens. Today we're going to do a couple of different soups. I'm going to start you off with one, a beautiful vegetable soup with Ditalini pasta. And I'm going to cook it in our NutriPot pressure cooker. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm pressed for time. Not that I want to be with you guys today, but I want to get this done and move on to some other dishes. Now, we normally do these soups in our PIC, our precision induction cooktop, with our Dorlon Copper Forge pans. That works great. I can knock this soup out in about 35 minutes. What I'm going to do today is finish the soup start to end in a NutriPot in under 15 minutes. So let's get started, okay? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my NutriPot on sear, and I've done that, and I've got it on four or five minutes. But let me show you how that does real quick. So you hit sear, and I, it automatically goes to five minutes, but I want to adjust it. I'm going to get this up to about eight minutes and turn it on. Now what this does is now this gives my pressure cooker the ability to saute or to brown meats, or to get my vegetables going. And then we'll get the rest of the ingredients in there and we'll go from there. So first up, we're gonna talk about the ingredients. Fresh tomato, I'm going to do fresh zucchini, which are beautiful this time of year. And I'm gonna do some yellow squash, and we're gonna finish it at the end with some asparagus. I'm also gonna use a little shallot. We've talked about these before, right? This is uh, very similar to an onion. Uh, much smaller, much sweeter. It's in the same allium family as the onion. Uh, I love using them, it gives, uh, it still brings the onion flavor, the earthiness, but it doesn't give the, the sharp bitterness. So we're gonna use that. A Little bit of garlic, some kale. Kale because it's very good for you and uh, trying to be healthy. A little rosemary to make this a real country style soup, extra virgin olive oil. And here, now you could use chicken stock and quite often when I make the soups, I use chicken stock. But today I'm gonna show you something I made here. This is actually a vegetable stock, but I made it from chickpeas. So if you ever cooked your own chickpeas at home to make hummus or make chickpea salad, when you steam or when you simmer your dried chickpeas, save the water that you cooked it in. It makes an amazing vegetable stock. A little trick for you. So that's what we have here. We're going to use that. And then we'll give you the recipe later. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get a good amount, about two tablespoons extra virgin olive oil going. And I'm going to get right on my shallot. Now this is going to be a country style soup. So we're not going to spend a lot of time cutting things up real fine like we do in a restaurant. Uh, you know, all the scraps we're gonna put in the compost today. Um, so let's get our shallot going. Let's get this peeled. And I try not to, it takes a second to peel because I don't want to take off too much of the shallots are actually not that cheap. So I just want to get the paper off, right? That's, believe it or not, some kind of, that's a pain. What we do is very simply, we cut it in half and then I'm just gonna make some real thin slices because again, I want to see these vegetables on the spoon when I serve it. So this is going to be a little country stop. Now you've seen some of the other soups we've done where we spend a lot of time doing knife work uh, to get the vegetables real fine and perfect. This is not that soup. So we can go to shallots. You can already hear the sizzle. And this is a pressure cooker that gets so hot on the sear that we can actually sear vegetables. Okay, so there's that. Now the garlic, I peeled these already. Uh, I think I showed you guys how to peel them with the bowls, make a lot of noise camera guy he didn't like that so the garlic real simple just give it a smash with your knife it's flat and when you do that then it's real easy to run the knife through and again you see a lot of chefs chopping the heck out of their garlic I'm not one of them if you guys don't have one of these pastry scraper it's called they cost 99 cents a dollar uh, kitchen supply store uh, invaluable in the kitchen all right so we got this going here. So this is the base of the aromatics. This is our shallot and our garlic, okay? Second thing I'm gonna do at this point, before I start getting to the other vegetables, is I wanna get the things that have some heavier flavors, the oils in them. So rosemary is an herb, actually, uh, I call it one of the oil herbs because it contains an oil, uh, other than like a water herb like parsley or a chive or cilantro. So this thyme, the amazing oil compounds in there, brings out a lot of flavor. So I want to get this in now while the pot is getting hot. Okay? So we just de-stem them like this. We don't need a lot, that might even be too much. But save these stems. If you have small animals or chickens, they go nuts for rosemary stems. Uh, you can make your own infused oil at home with this, or at least get them in your compost bin. Please don't waste them. Last year, just from the videos we cooked for social media and our cooking club channels, uh, I think we got, how many bags? We got like seven large bags of uh, compost that we use in our garden. So 
it adds up. When you're chopping a, a tomato, doesn't seem like, you know, what's the point of, of composting that? It adds up, believe me. Okay, in goes the rosemary. And then we're going to get one more item in that has oil, black pepper. But here's the other thing I love about NutriPot. So this is kind of in my way, comes right off. Put it on the side. It goes back on just as easy. So now this NutriPot is working, black pepper, because again, has oil. The NutriPot is working just like it would on a stove top. So just like a pot works by getting hot, sauteing your vegetables, building your soup, I'm doing the same exact thing in here, except I'm gonna close the lid, I'm gonna cook the soup right inside. Okay, so now let's get to the heart of the vegetables. We've got some yellow squash, really nice this time of year. That's going in the compost. And I'm just gonna cut these real simple. The zucchini look great. This is all from the local market right here where our company is outside of Chicago. Every weekend there's a really cool farmer's market and uh, we made some friends with people over there. And uh, so we gotta get first pick, which is nice. Real simple, I'm gonna do a real nice dice on this. Now you could cut these in half moons if you wanted, I wouldn't mind. The other thing about the sear function is when that turns off, I could quickly restart it. I could also set it up to 20 minutes, which is nice. That gives you plenty of time to have that high heat to cook. Now this soup is gonna have this pasta, which is called ditalini from Italy. It's very traditional, served uh, for young people, for, for babies actually, and, and for elderly people. Cooks very quickly, and it's uh, almost always found in a soup or a broth or a brodo. Uh, sometimes you'll see it's called tubetti, but I call it ditalini. It's how I was taught as a kid, and that's what we're calling it today. But I like the contrast that it makes in my soup with the vegetables. So that's it, a couple planks. Couple of cubes. And before I start adding these, let's take a look at this. I'm actually getting some real fragrant aromas from here. And I'm actually getting some nice, look, this is a pressure cooker, guys. I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually so hot in here, it's actually browning my shallots and my garlic. And I'm getting the most beautiful aromas right now from the rosemary, black pepper. That's pretty cool. Just the fact that it gets that hot is really, really, really uh, makes it a good kitchen tool. Now, chefs all across the country, you can see videos all over YouTube uh, for professional chefs in restaurants actually using pressure cookers now, every, doing everything from short ribs to braised chicken, etc. cetera. Um, so it's become really a ubiquitous tool, not only for home cooks, but actually professional chefs. Uh, I actually have quite a few uh, chef buddies here in the Chicago area that are using our larger size NutriPots and uh, they say a lot of good things about them. They don't always say good things about me, but they say a lot of good things about the NutriPot. And that's okay. So we'll finish the yellow squash, knock out the zucchini, and that's going to turn off. So let me show you that real quick. But getting it back on is really not a big deal. And if you have questions about this, you just call our phone number and we'll be able to walk you through it. But I'm really impressed with this, guys. This saves us a lot of time in the kitchen. Actually saves us a lot of time in the test kitchen when I'm actually working on other, other units. Say we're working on a recipe for our air fryer or for this. Sometimes we'll just pull out the pressure cookers and go, okay, let's get this done quick. So you guys can see the amount of vegetables I have in here. And I think what you're gonna see is that this is gonna be a pretty hearty soup because it's not gonna be swimming in a ton of broth. It's actually gonna be actually pretty nice. Let's do one more zucchini real fast. And it's this simple, right? I've worked in restaurants and hotels around the world. Uh, the food we do, sometimes very complex. It takes a lot of people to prepare it. Stuff I wanna teach on Cooking Club to bring to you guys on social media. Get you and your family closer to fresh food, but doesn't change you to the kitchen all day. And actually, that's not a sales pitch, but pressure cookers actually can be a big part of that. And actually, if you read the manual on this one, you can actually program it where this would start your soup or your stew at a later time. And later on, I'll even show you how to use it as a, a warming station or even a slow cooker. 
All right, so let's get the soup going so we can clean up, and I'll show you how to get this going. But if you guys can smell this, this is amazing. Now you can see the black pepper getting toasted in there. The rosemary is starting to come through. All right, so now, a couple more things. Fresh tomato, beautiful garden tomato. This one, again, farmer's market, about a mile and a half from here. You can actually smell it from here. There's no wax or anything on it like you get at the supermarket. Completely different. But when I put the tomato in, what that does is automatically it gives off liquids to the stew, or to the soup, rather. And I don't want to cool the pan down yet because I'm still looking to get a little more char and caramelization from the onions and now maybe even the zucchini and the squash, okay? I don't know. Got a jumper. Okay. So the kale could actually go in now. Start cooking that. Kale, very hearty. Uh, I peel the stems off. We wash the heck out of it. As you get lower down, you see the stem gets real thick. Uh, could you eat it? Yeah, sure. But it takes, I don't like it. It takes too long to cook. So we peel them off and we basically use the outer leaves. Let's see if I can find one with a stem my sous chef missed. Yeah, here's one. So look, I take the leaves off to come off simple, but the stem is pretty sturdy. But again, compost, and if you have small animals, especially chickens, they go wild over that. So we restarted this. I think you guys can actually hear it. That's what you want to hear when you're sauteing a vegetable soup. You want to hear the noise. So in we go with some kale. And again, if you see the stems, if your little sous chef at home missed them, just pull them off. It's not that big a deal. I'm saying that because my sous chef's sitting right over there. Nice job, guys. Thank you. I have a great staff. My staff is amazing. Wouldn't be able to do this without them. Okay, so now we let this cook down. Now, what didn't I put in here? I put black pepper. I didn't put its brother in. Salt, why not? Salt, when you mix it with vegetables over this heat, pulls moisture out, creates steam. I didn't want to create steam. I wanted to create some caramel on the onions and on the garlic, and I did that. So now once I get everything in, then I can go ahead and I can add a little salt to it now, let it cook, and then afterwards, before we serve it, we can add the salt and adjust the seasoning. So two last things to go in here. One, I'm gonna get the pasta in now. And because it's sitting on top of the kale, I'm not worried about it sticking to the bottom or something like that. And then we're going to get a little tomato in here. And I'm not even worried about seeds, right? This is a country soup. Could we peel and seed these? Yeah, we'll do a demo video of that for you one day. But right now, the only thing we can take out of this maybe is the stem. But if you cut them the way I just did, straight down, you only get the stem on two pieces instead of having to dig a big hole out in the middle of the tomato, which, uh, which I think is crazy. Look, a quick dice on this. Doesn't take long. Run your knife over it. Take your time. Be safe. Okay? I can go fast, but I practice for years. But if you guys keep doing this, if you keep cooking at home, especially with your loved ones, it'll get easier for you. And like everything else, the easier it becomes, or the more familiar you are, the more exciting it is. Okay? So these days... I think one of the best things you can do is be at home with people you love, people you care about, and share some food. And look, this dish, would, I put one big zucchini, big yellow squash, a little onion, a pound of pasta went in there. It's going to get about four cups of vegetable stock and a tomato. This whole dish cost about $2, all right? $2 to sit around with my family or my friends and share something. Think about that, okay? So that's it. Now this is a pretty good sized tomato, so I'm gonna guess at the end here, we probably have probably about six ounces, just under a half a pound of tomato, but that's okay, because they're gonna stew down, and they're gonna bring a lot of acidity to this. Again, this is why this thing is amazing. Just get a little scoop. Chef trying not to make a mess as usual. It's okay, the sous chef will clean it, I think. I hope. Okay, so that's my tomato. That's it. So let's take a look. Already starting to get, can you hear that? Look at the color change on the kale. Isn't that amazing, guys? It turns bright green with this incredible heat in the Nutri-Pot. That, to me, looks like a beautiful soup. I'm going to get my four cups in. It's going to be about a half of this. All right? Immediately goes quiet because the stock closes. It. We get a good pinch of sea salt. It's the only salt we use here. Okay, now the other thing we could do in here, and I was debating whether I wanted to do it for you or not, because it depends on the seasonality. 
is fresh corn. Believe it or not, right here in Illinois, we actually have amazing corn. We're right in the heart of the prairie, so this is good stuff. Um, we buy it, we clean it here. Uh, again, we get it locally. But you could use frozen corn. Why would you? Uh, don't use canned corn. Please, just don't do it. If you don't have the fresh corn, just do what I can do is just admit it or you can put it in. Look, corn is easy to clean. Cut it in half, right? Be careful. Take your knife and just run it down the sides like this. Now with these stems here, first of all, obviously, crazy chickens love them. But if you have enough of these, you put these in a pot with a little water and a cup of milk. Let it simmer. If you have some herbs like fresh thyme or a bay leaf, let it simmer. You'll make the most amazing corn stock from which you can make a beautiful corn soup. All right. So the next and last step I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid back on the NutriPot, right? That's simple. And we're going to clean up this mess. I'm going to show you how to program this real quick. Now, we have the presets on here. And one of the things I love about the preset, right, is that, so look how easy, this is the other thing I love about this, this lid. Slides right on like that. It's that easy, guys. It really is. Let's get the lid closed. Make sure it's locked. You hear the, the little bell? I'm going here to soup. So the soup one will give you 15 minutes. It's pre-programmed. This pasta soup with these type of vegetables, I don't need to cook it that long. Also, you have to factor in the preheating as it's coming up to temperature. So I'm actually going to drop this one down. Let's go to 10 minutes. Uh, and that's the best thing about our, our preset buttons that we came up with is that they're adjustable. Hit start, it's gonna preheat the pH, and then it's gonna count down from the 10, and we're gonna have the most amazing soup. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean up this mess with my sous chef. When we come back, we're gonna plate up the most amazing didelini soup, or Zupa Verdure. Welcome back everybody, Chef David here in the New Wave Kitchen Studio, and now let's finish the plate up on that amazing didelini Verdure soup that we made. Beautiful soup with pasta, done quickly in only 10 minutes in the NutriPot electric pressure cooker. So, you know about electric pressure cookers, there's two ways to release the steam. There's what's called a natural release, which basically means you turn the unit off, unplug it, my recommendation, and just leave it until it completely cools off and the steam will come out, and then you'll be able to open the lid. Or you can quick release. The thing I like about the NutriPot is we actually have a quick release lock, so I don't have to stand here and hold the button while the steam comes out. So let's get this released. I love that sound, I don't know why. I'm like a kid around there. My son laughs when that happens, I don't know why. But we let all the steam come out. Now, while that's releasing, let me set up a few more things I wanna show you for this amazing soup. I had a soup very similar to this traveling through Italy years ago. Uh, I've done this actually in restaurants I've actually worked in. Uh, so let's do this. We're gonna take a clove of garlic, peeled. And I'm just gonna rub the bottom of the bowl, right? I don't even need chunks or pieces of garlic. I'm just trying to get the oil. So that's number one, okay? That goes in my compost. Number two, I've made the most amazing crostini. I'm gonna show you how to finish those. But before I do that, what I wanna do with this soup, so I wanna get a little lemon zest. I wanna get a little brightness, a little acid to the soup. So if I don't have a zester, and I can't find mine actually, I use a really good potato peeler. This is actually called a Swiss peeler, and it gives you a really thin shave, and it leaves all the white behind. The white is the pith, it's bitter. I don't want that in my zest. We don't need a lot. So what I'm gonna do is simple. Because I don't have my zester, I'm gonna hand cut the zest. Thin as you can possibly do it, go slow, be safe. And the oil and the lemon bring a little different dimension to the finished soup. It elevates it, right? As will the garlic and as will the crostini when we finish them. Also, the other thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut the lemon, because we're gonna brighten the soup up even more with a little lemon juice. If you don't have one of these lemon squeezers, New Wave doesn't make them, but I wish we did, because it's a great idea. It's the best way to squeeze lemon. Just put the lemon in, close it, and we'll give a nice little blast to our soup. So as soon as this is done releasing, we're gonna plate this up. In the meantime, crostini. I took some beautiful Italian sourdough bread actually was left over. And I toasted it in my air fryer, my Brio air fryer. And then, myself and one of my sous chefs, we made this fantastic herb puree. This is just very simply basil, parsley, a little chili flake, 
a little bit of garlic and extra virgin olive oil, and we pureed it. And it's just fragrant this time of year. The basil's so fresh, the garlic, pungent, and then a little bite from the chili. And all I do is this. This is my favorite thing to have with this soup. This just goes right on this crispy crostini. Now, I think the first two we really made into like crackers, which is cool. These are a little softer, uh, so this will be more like your bread, right? So me, I like the crunchy ones. I like to actually crumble that in my soup. My son, he likes the soft ones, so I made some for him too. So hopefully he's watching at home and he'll see. That'll be nice. Okay, so that being done, we get ready to release this. As Soon as all the steam is out, the Surelock system turns off, it'll beep, then I know it's safe to open. The other thing I do with my pressure cooker, with everybody's pressure cooker, when the unit tells you you're off and it's safe, always take your hand and go slow at first opening it. Make sure that it's loose and then you'll know it's open. Don't ever try to force a lid on anybody's pressure cooker. I don't care who makes it, don't ever try to force a lid, right? It's not good. So when the steam is out, all right, Sherlock, we're in good shape. Look how easy this moves and I know it's safe. Okay, up. Again, the lid is so easy to take off on the NutriPot. I don't know if you can get a shot inside here, guys, but let's take a look. Look at that. Pasta, perfectly cooked. My kale, I've got corn, I've got my onion and garlic, the rosemary, so let's do this. We put the garlic clove on the bottom. A Couple things we can do. First things first, I wanna get my lemon juice in here, okay? Lemon goes in the compost, squeezer goes to the dishwasher, and then, if we wanted to go another stage on this, I could take some of that herb puree, and I just kind of made that one up, it's actually not part of my recipe, and get that in here. It just gives it a real earthy brightness. It just smells like the garden. This is just amazing. This is a real thick, rustic soup. Bowl, it smells like garlic, beautiful. We put that in there. Now, let's get to the heart of this dish. This actually eats my opinion, more like a pasta dish than a soup dish. But if you can see this beautiful broth in here, how amazing this is. We get some kale, try to clean up a little bit. Chef always makes a mess, you guys know that. Look how simple this is. We put a couple of crostini right on the plate. And then the lemon zest, I like them big like this. I think this is better. But if we want it, we could easily run our knife over it. But when you bite into a piece of uh, fresh lemon peel, you get an amazing blast of lemon oil. And that's our soup. If we wanted to finish it with a big blast of Parmesan and a little drizzle, extra virgin olive oil. Now we've got something to talk about. Bottle of cold white wine, some people that I love around me, and I've got Ditalini con Vedore, a beautiful summer and springtime soup right out of the NutriPot pressure cooker. Thanks guys, we'll talk again.